Hey, it's Lee from Amion. In this video, we're going to talk about building a new residency schedule from scratch. Uh, if you're taking over for outgoing chief residents and you're going to be converting a schedule, head to amion.com and down underneath building schedules, check out the residency convert to new year video. That's going to help you take your existing schedule and push it ahead. Um, for those of you that are brand new to Amion, uh, Amion is two halves of one system. There is the website, amion.com, where staff can log in and see your posted schedule out online. AZ5 is a sample login where you'll see a sample residency schedule, a pretty big block schedule, and subsequent call shift and clinic schedules. You're welcome to poke around in there as much as you want. Check out the conference schedule, a few other things that are out there. Um, so that's one half, amion.com, where everybody can look at their schedules, sync them up with their uh, mobile devices uh, sync them up with their Google Calendar or Outlook, things like that. Uh, the other half of Amion is a schedule building tool called OnCall. Um, if you're out at Amion.com and you're a brand new scheduler, head to download in the lower left. Grab whichever version of the desktop scheduler you need. We call it the OnCall program. I've got OnCall on my computer already, so I'm going to dive right in and build a schedule using it. Um, when you first open up the program, it'll say Welcome to Amion. And if you click to create a new schedule, you've got a choice to make. The top option uh, is for a simple resident uh, call schedule. Sorry, I shouldn't say resident. Uh, an attending style schedule is what we call it. Uh, the only piece that it's missing is the block schedule, the rotation schedule component. Um, you can certainly use this top option to make a call schedule or a simple shift schedule. But if you're going to be including a residency block rotation uh, component to your schedule, you want the bottom option for residency fellowship. So I'll choose that here. The next screen I see is the general setup, and this is where all the criteria for the schedule get entered. So services is up first. That's the uh, the things people do. Now, um, these can be both your block rotations and your call services uh, or shift services. When I add a service here, it can be something uh, someone does. I'm going to make this sort of a, uh, a surgery style schedule. Now, as I'm adding them here, they are call services. This will have a Q4 call pattern and be part of my call schedule. I have other options to add them as shift assignments, and this will make more sense in a moment. Uh, but I'm going to stick with a very basic, uh, let's say there's a VAMC schedule, there's a urology schedule, there's a transplant uh, assignment. That'll make more sense in a moment. Let's add some staff types. Maybe we've got uh, R1s, R2s, R3s. You can color code those any way you'd like. By the way, as I'm typing up top here, I'm clicking uh, Enter on my keyboard. I can also click the Add button to uh, add things in. I'll add a couple staff members for each type of staff. Uh, let's have a couple R1s. Now, a schedule at MIon can be as big as you'd like it to. Um, it doesn't have to conform to any uh, size. We don't charge by the person or the, by the assignment or anything like that. Um, let's stick with six residents for the moment. Uh, I'll skip requirements. I'll add a couple clinics for the moment, maybe a GI and ONC clinic. Uh, I'll avoid anything else for the, for the time being. I'm going to click Finish and say Go to First Block Schedule. Uh, I'm hoping to move along quickly here and show you as much as I can in a short period of time. Uh, the general setup window, you can close that now. If you need to get back into it to add more people or uh, more rotations or more service assignments, uh, you'll see the general setup under the file menu at the top left. Up next, there's a big grid and a bunch of funky looking icons along the top. Everything in Amion has a mouse over note. When in doubt, hold your mouse still. You'll get a little explanation of what's going to happen when you click. Also, there is a floating toolbar here called the Info Box, your trusty sidekick. Its contents are dynamic in that they change depending on where you click. If you click on the spot where uh, the dates are above your rotation schedule, you'll get information about that block, uh, how many blocks are on screen, uh, how long the block is, things like that. If you click on a person's name along the left, uh, you'll get information about that service. You can add clinics or requests. You can enter contact info, things like that. So let's keep pushing on. I'm going to add a couple assignments here. Uh, maybe a GI might float onk. This is what Smith does throughout the year. Maybe Patel does something different. Uh, the highlighter tool turns on automatically. This is kind of a neat way to spot what's happening on your grid. Um, you'll see that there's one person on GI in this column. And Patel is on GI once in this row. If I click on Night Float, I've got a two at the top. Two people are assigned to Night Float. 
if uh, Patel does night float again later, you'll see if I highlight that assignment, there are two Patel night float assignments along the left. Um, each of the colored icons in the top left represents the different classes, but right now I have the all staff view turned on. That means I'm looking at all the classes, the ones, twos, and threes. Uh, if you click the view menu at the top, you can turn off the all staff view and look at one class at a time, and that'll be helpful if your block rotation dates are a bit different. Uh, sometimes in a surgery schedule, for example, the interns, the ones, might rotate pretty frequently, maybe every month, but maybe the twos don't rotate quite so frequently. Um, I'm going to make it so that they have nine custom blocks. And do I want to reset the dates along the top so that they fill the year? Yes, I do. So these guys rotate every, you know, couple of months, a little bit uh, longer than a month for them on their rotations. And the senior guys, the threes, they rotate even less often. Um, they're on a service for a couple months at a time. They're more senior. Now I've got separate dates for each one of my classes here. You can still view them all together, but they'll default to one of the classes, in this case the threes. So I've got a bunch of strange looking blue text. The blue text is exception text. Smith is on the GI service except for 81 to 831 when uh, there, she's not on anything. Or she, let's see, if I stretch and skew my schedule out, is she on something else? Nope. Looks good. If I want to make sure I know what she's doing, I could turn off the all staff view, head back to the ones. Ah, Smith is on GI in July and night float in August. That makes more sense. By the way, you can click the window menu and play around with your font. If your screen's a little hard to read, don't be afraid to jack up your font to something more manageable. The cube icon at the top represents the block schedule. The call schedule is the red crescent moon at the top. Um, typically, people will build their block rotation schedule first, uh, add in assignments, and then based on who's assigned to do what throughout the year, they can have the system automatically build their call schedule. Um, I've got a night float row on my call schedule. Maybe I've got a VAMC row on my call schedule that doesn't need to be there. I can right click on that and say remove row. Um, I don't need that to be there. It'll still be an option among my block rotation assignments. I can still put someone on over at the VA. Uh, but I don't need that as a call assignment. I do need night float. And by default, if I click on night float along the left, the info box says call service for night float at the top. That means it's looking to see who's on the night float service. Um, but maybe night float pulls for more uh, services than that. I'm going to click the window menu and uh, choose the rule writer and set up a quick staff by rule. Staff by rule number one says that uh, anybody who's on the Night float GI or ONC rotation gets to work the night float call service. Now when I click to make an assignment in the night float call service, my info box, my little trusty sidekick, has a bunch of different options turned on. It's a list of names, but you can also toggle on some of the statistics and some of the, the busy bar to see what people are up to. I'll keep my list pretty clean for the time being. Um, and I'm going to take a look at the team summary. You can also look at all staff which is the default view, or you can look at an individual detail. I'm going to use the team summary to have the info box list out for me the folks that are on the services that can cover night float. That's Patel and Smith. Remember back in our block rotation schedule, uh, Patel and Smith are on GI and Ankh and then night float. Um, the other folks are not on anything, so they're not uh, allowed to work there. If I put someone on uh, urology in July, that's not one of the services that can cover night float, so I won't see that person in my list. Um, if I click on night float along the left, my info box is dynamic. It changes to show me what I can do with that row. It's Q4 call right now, which means if I drop a name in, like so, that person's going to be Q4 for the entire time that they're on that service. Um, you can also use the system's auto scheduler to fill that in. Under the window menu is the auto scheduler tool, and in this window you can select a time frame that you'd like to fill out. Uh, it's set to the whole year right now. If I click Apply, the system's going to do its best to fill in. Now, it's only got a couple names to choose from, so there isn't a whole lot to fill in this schedule. But if I toggle ahead, you'll see that eventually I don't have anybody to put in here. Um, there's nobody on any of the services that allow for night float coverage. So the info box didn't have anybody to add. Uh, if I fill out my block rotation schedule a little more completely, then I can go ahead and have a uh, schedule that works. 
for example, if I del click delete on my keyboard and maybe put Ahmed on Night Float instead, Rosen is going to be on Ankh, Wang is on GI, Ruiz is on Night Float. Now that I have done that for July, I can go to my call schedule. Maybe it's not a Q4 call pattern anymore. Maybe it's variable. Anybody can work anytime. When I uh, click to auto schedule or click to apply to fill the whole year, uh, my July and first couple months are going to look pretty colorful. Um, I had a lot of people to choose from because we're having all those rotations be able to uh, offer staff coverage for the night float call service. The other icons at the top have mouse over notes too. There's a shift schedule. Right now I don't have any of my rotations configured for shift work. Uh, if I wanted to have some nighttime call as well as some daytime shift assignments, I could click File and head back to General Setup. Remember the Services tab. I could say that the uh, VAMC is not a call service, but it is a shift service, and uh, it needs one shift row. So now I've got my nightly call assignments, but I've also got my daily shift assignment, just one for VA. Same kind of idea. Click on the spot where a name goes, and you can add a name. Right now, no one's configured to work at the VA, but if I needed to manually kind of override that and drop a name in, I can. I had to switch to look at the all staff list to that, to do that. Um, as you're starting to see, I'm sure there are lots of ways to work in an AMI-on schedule. There are lots of small tools that'll help you, and everybody is using it a bit differently. We're here to show you how the tools work and, and answer questions as you go so you can find your groove. Uh, if I click on VAMC along the left, I can edit the times that VAMC runs, uh, who's allowed to work there, what days it's staffed, whether there are some targets, whether there's a pattern, whether some days are worth more points than others. Um, I'll keep on moving. The blue C at the top is the clinic schedule. The red dots you see on the clinic schedule indicate call and shift assignments. You can hold your mouse over those for more detail. Um, I also like to right click on the name of my staff and ask the system to show my block assignments for me. This is kind of neat. I can now get to see um, block assignments, call and shift assignments, and if I make some uh, clinic assignments, I get to see those as well. I added a GI clinic for Smith here in the evening. Uh, my schedule is set up to have AM, PM, and evening clinics. Um, that may not be the case for you. You may have AM and PM clinics. If you click Window in, uh, excuse me, File and Preferences, um, the preference window that opens has tons and tons of little options you can play around with. Um, if I want to look at the clinic scheduling and say that there are uh, not evening clinics, now I can have just an AM and a PM slot here. You can manually assign clinics if you want. This clinic appears in red because it's uh, when Smith is post-call. If I put her on the day before, we won't see that red mark. Uh, if you want to automatically assign clinics because they're continuity clinics, you can do that as well. Um, click on anybody's name along the left, maybe Wang here, the third year. In the info box, same place you'd add contact info or add vacation requests. Uh, you can click clinics. The clinics window that opens lets you add a clinic, and maybe the it's the case that uh, um, Tuesday and Thursday morning, whenever you're on the uh, oncology service, you must go to oncology clinic. And that's true for all staff, for anybody who's on oncology. When I click apply, the folks who are on oncology, which are Patel and Rosen, um, they have Tuesday and Thursday AM clinics automatically. That's all set. Um, that would be true for the whole year if I had fleshed out the schedule a little bit more. Um, the ones in red are post-call. You can cancel clinics. If you'd like to build a cancel clinic rule, you can do that. Um, there's a cancel clinic rule back under file and preferences. We could say that uh, we should cancel clinics when somebody is post-call and uh, they have an AM clinic the next day. If I apply changes, you'll see a bunch of things disappear from the schedule. Those clinics have been canceled when someone's post-call. So that's just a touch of the clinic schedule as well. Let's keep on running down the line here. We'll take a look back at our call schedule. There are two ways to look at the schedule. This icon that looks like a funny table lays it out like a table or a grid. You can also look at it like a calendar, although most everybody who's building a residency call schedule is looking at it this way, like a table. 
This way lets you sort of use abbreviations instead of full names and lets you build a full grid so you can really squeeze a whole bunch onto a single screen if necessary. Um, the sigma icon at the top is for statistics and tally. That'll count everything up on the screen. Um, right now I'm tallying up call for uh, the whole year it looks like. These are the assignments broken down by day of week and weekdays versus weekends. You can see how many weekends have been given out. Uh, you can also tally by service. Um, now I'm tall tallying up shifts by service. So there's a row for each person and a column for each thing they can do as far as call. Uh, and these reports are kind of, you know, um, sendable. You can copy and paste them into Excel or Google Sheets or something like that if you need to make a report. And you can report on a lot of different things here. If you're working on the call schedule and it becomes kind of big and unwieldy, there's an icon along the top that looks like a blue dot over a white dot. That opens up schedule content. Schedule content is a place where you can turn your services on or off. And you might have a situation where you want one of your screens, maybe set up one, the first thing people see when they log into amion.com to show everything on your call schedule. But maybe set up two uh, should be the overnight services. And that's night float and transplant. You can even type on the gray screen here on the black text at the top and call it overnight schedule. Maybe set up number three is your daytime stuff. You can do the very same thing and say day schedule. Or maybe that doesn't make sense. This is I'm just being very arbitrary here. Um, but that schedule content helps you chop up your potentially large schedule into smaller, more manageable pieces. The blue eye brings back your info box. If you lose your trusty sidekick, you can see how handy that's been. The sigma with the blue arrow through it opens up and closes your date range selector. Most folks will want to schedule by a month or by rotation. Uh, if you schedule by rotation, I'm now looking at the third year rotation width, which is like two months and a week or so. Um, but a uh, month might make more sense, or you can customize the date range at however you want it to be. Um, there's a note icon at the top. The yellow post-it note icon lets you add um, notes all over the place. You can add notes to people. You could add notes to days. Notes can be public. They can be private. They can be attached to services. They uh, can be color-coded. When they print out, they print out below the schedule if you're printing uh, uh, out to a piece of paper. Um, remember that sample schedule we logged in it to at amion.com, AZ5. That had an icon above it that looks like a teacher standing in front of a blackboard. Um, this represents notes that have been assigned to dates. So people can assign a meeting slash note, is what we call it. Uh, if I add a note to a day, and I say this is going to be conference, 8 a.m., something like that, a little clock appears, I can time my conference, uh, and that'll appear online for the folks looking at the published schedule as uh, one of those meeting notes in that icon. Pretty cool. The highlighter tool we noticed works really well in the block schedule. It'll also help you out in any of the screens. Click on someone's assignment and watch all their other assignments highlight. Um, those are the bare bones behind an, a residency style schedule. Amion can do other things like send out um, schedule change notifications if you want. Under window and ca calendar subscriptions there are options to do that. If you've got any kind of complex pattern in your schedule you can build that. Call and shift patterns has a, a lot of options. Um, there are videos for these features in the help index if you'd like to check them out. Uh, under File and Preferences, we saw a lot of the options out there that are possible. Uh, if you're building a schedule and there are other residencies using Amion in your hospital, you can consider setting up an Amion staffing link. If there's a set of assignments on another schedule that really belongs on your schedule and you don't want to have to build that data twice, you can have Amion mirror in data from that other schedule so it appears on your schedule automatically. Every time they make a change, your schedule changes as well. Uh, if you're using a residency evaluation system like MedHub or New Innovations, you can have your Amion data flow out into that other system so you don't have to build your schedule in two places. Um, okay, this has been Amion 101. Inevitably, folks will have questions about setting block dates, uh, building rules for call schedule, but uh, at this point, once your schedule is uh, built out and looks the way you want it to, the final step is to click File and Publish to Amion. You can use your admin password and save this schedule to Amion, then it'll be online for folks to see. Uh, at this point in the year, you'll see a little green lock icon. You can close that lock and save to Amion if you want to save your work, but not have it be visible to your residents just yet. Um, all right, don't forget to uh, head to Amion.com and click the contact link. Drop us a, uh, an email or a phone call if you have any questions. And uh, thank you very much for your time.